this is Ali Shanma and uh, a number of people, a number of customers were having trouble mounting the propellers and some of them actually mounted the propellers in the wrong direction and some of them did not even know how to properly mount the propellers plus they did not know how to calibrate the GPS compass and how to fly the seeker or OFM multirotors for the very very first time. Uh, also having trouble with the radios and stuff so for now I have started uh, putting the stickers on the radios showing the uh, different switches and their assignment but here in this video I'm going to show you taking Seeker 450 V2 as an example uh, all these steps that you should take before flight right after you get your quadcopter okay so here we are uh, this is the Seeker 450 V2 uh, nothing has been done it has just been built no flights are done just been built and programmed so this is what you need to do when you go out on in the field for the very first time look at the radio uh, normal switch assignments for your radios are very simple switch E is your flight mode so it's down here is manual middle is altitude hold up here is the GPS position hold mode but in the terms of the radio we call this up and this down so remember this thing so if this is here this is switch E down and GPS position hold mode and this is switch E up and manual mode but anyway if your radio is this way it's all the way pointing away from you and all the way pointing closer to you is the GPS position hold mode all right so this is switch E flight mode switch B is your RTH it will activate RTH if your switch E is in GPS position hold mode so if you're gonna take off in GPS position hold mode and switch B is down your NASA LED will keep blinking and it will not fly or if you try to fly you will get a crash so make sure switch B is all the way up this way okay away from you and then you have switch C so this is intelligent orientation control up is off middle is uh, up is off middle is your course log and down is your home log you can experiment with that one later rest of the switches are not used uh, F switch sometimes is used to reset the counter and uh, your VR knob will control the gimbal and if the gimbal is not installed according to customers requirement I can actually put DT5 or VR to set the manual gain so before you do it make sure to check with NASA that moving the DT5 or VR knob is it actually increasing decreasing your gains or not because if you increase the gains a lot or decrease a lot you will have a crash so this is your radio okay let's look at the quadcopter now the first thing you need to do is put the propellers so when you get the propellers on the top side you can see it's flat and on the bottom there's a notch so there it's empty and you need to fit something in there so that it will sit on the motor right on the shaft and won't move you have been given with such met metallic rings two are thicker and two are thinner according to your motor shaft like these are 980 kV motors you will have the thicker one going in okay all right so some of the motors will take the thinner ring according to their shaft to fit on it and some of the motors will take the thicker ring now it's very very simple first the ring goes into the propeller according to your motor shaft then propeller goes onto the shaft then a flat black ring and then the cone uh, these kind of motors also have a small nut on it so let's do it and I will show you okay we are all set now before we start mounting the propeller let's look at the quadcopter layout this is your front so your front right will spin counterclockwise front left clockwise and then follow this one counterclockwise and follow this one clockwise you can easily check the diagram in NASA user manual and make sure your propellers are fitting right so if they spin in that direction they should blow air down now if you put this propeller for instance and it will spin clockwise inside imagine what will happen it will throw the air up and NASA cannot balance and your quadcopter will crash so make sure your propeller is actually throwing the air down when it's spinning in the right direction you can easily figure it out okay now these are the rings thicker and thinner you can see some motors will take thinner rings and some thicker so if you look at this one 
this ring is loose, bigger, so you have to go with the thicker ring, which fits perfectly on it, alright? So first thing first, put the ring in the provided area on your propeller's back, then make sure which way the propeller should spin, and put it on the motor accordingly. After that, as per your motor, there will be a black ring goes on top of it and then a screw some motors uh, a nut some motors do not have this nut they just have the cone directly on it which is also okay to put so make sure you actually use a loctite on this you don't want a propeller to come loose during flight similarly follow this step and fix all the propellers in the right directions let me do it all right now that all the propellers set properly once again clock anti-clock anti-clock clock okay the next step is to turn on the radio power up the quadcopter wait for the GPS to be found locked all the satellites and then do the GPS and cal uh, compass calibration so uh, Read the NASA user manual once again on how NASA will communicate with you using the LED lights and their colors and their blink patterns. Very simple step is to remember uh, when you connect the power, LED will be blinking three times in red and as satellites keeps locked, uh, getting locked on, the LED will stop blinking three times and two times, one time or simply suddenly will stop blinking completely in red. If it's blinking in some many many different colors you have an error and if it blinks uh, after uh, three, uh, after it has found all the satellite, if the LED blinks in the green that means it has locked the uh, home point also. Um, remember your radio should be in manual position. Uh, your flight mode switch should be in manual position. Okay, so uh, turn the radio on, make sure the throttle is zero, connect the power and wait. Look at the LED. One, two, three, it's blinking three times in red. Wait until all the satellites are locked and this LED should turn off completely. Then you're ready to do compass calibration. Two times, a few satellites are locked. Green means home point is locked. In fact, you're good to fly now, but I would still suggest you wait. LED goes off completely, so you have all the satellites. Now you're good to do compass calibration. LED goes off completely, so you have all the satellites. Now you're good to do compass calibration. What you need to do is flip the switch E up and down. Make sure the throttle is zero again. Switch E up and down many times until you see the LED goes completely orange. All right, so here we go. Let me see if I can do it right in front of you so you can see it. Here's the switch E. Okay, so you can see the LED is orange. Now you need to pick up the quadcopter and turn 360 degree horizontal, then head down and turn 360 uh, vertically head down. Um, so your compass calibration will be done. Let me do it. Pick the quadcopter up and rotate horizontally, carefully, 360 degree. Your LED will turn green, head down, rotate 360 degree until the LED goes off. That's it. Compass calibration is done. Turn the power off. Turn the power off and wait for 5 seconds and then turn the power on again. Your satellite should be locked already. So you see the red LED is not blinking, your satellite is already locked, you are good to go. One last thing to take care, in order to have a good GPS position hold mode, this arrow 
this arrow here should point according to your area's magnetic declination. Like in New Zealand, it's 30 degrees. So you have to turn this arrow 30 degrees towards right, clockwise. So read, uh, found on Google Earth, your area's magnetic declination. Make sure this uh, arrow point in the right direction. Otherwise, you will not have a good GPS position hold mode. We are good to fly. Let's give it a flight. And I will teach you how to take, uh, take off in GPS position hold mode. CSC command, the motors will start spinning, uh, make sure the battery is heavy enough, make sure the CG is right, and in manual mode you need to control. So look at both, of, both can look right, here we go, and if you increase the throttle, it should get up straight, make sure the landing skids are not getting stuck in anything, but in manual mode you have to control as soon as it lifts off. In GPS position hold mode, it gets even simpler. So you put it in GPS position hold mode. Increase the throttle to middle. And a little higher maybe. And it will get up and start hovering. It might drift a little bit around, but if you have a lot throttle to 60%, let's say, it should suddenly rise and stay there and then you can control the throttle and start controlling it. So here we go. You can see it stays and then once it goes up, you put the throttle in the middle and it should hold its position. This is how you easily take off. Let me give it one more try. So once again in GPS position hold mode, give the CSC command and make sure to put the throttle 60% or so. Let it rise and then put the throttle back to uh, middle, don't put it to zero. Here we go. Okay, and it should stand right where it took off from, it's straight up. If there is wind, of course it will drift. If there is no wind, it should rise it's straight away. And if it is lighter, it will jump. So turn down the idle up motor, uh, motor idle up speed on V2 Seeker because Tiger motors are more powerful. There we go, once again. CSC command, up. And put it in the middle. That's it. Now you are very good to fly around. Just control. As soon as you put the throttle in the middle, leave the sticks, it should try to maintain its GPS position, okay? Alright, this is how you easily take off. 